Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live uh, today, friends, and it's something I've been wanting to get brought out to you guys as soon as I could there, but just been really tied up with some other issues here. Uh, Pope Francis met there with President Erdogan there at the Vatican. There were Kurds outside protesting uh, Erdogan's presence there in Rome, and of course, some of them got beat up by the police with batons. Uh, not a very good sight at all. Heavy security from what we understand, and of course, the Pope of Rome actually gave a president to uh, President Erdogan. He gave him the peace symbol as a gift to President Erdogan as the Turkish forces pound the Kurdish militia. I thought it's kind of ironic, but yet again, perhaps the Pope is trying to give him a message of, uh, you know, let's try not to have so much war. Uh, but nonetheless, it says here that Pope Francis gave a symbol of peace as a gift of Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan on Monday as Turkish forces continued their military offenses against the Kurds in Syria. The Pope and the Turkish leader had a 50-minute meeting behind closed doors during which they discussed the situation in Syria as well as refugees in the Middle East and Trump administration's decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital, which they both oppose. Now, I have to tell you something, friends. Let me let me blow this up where you guys can see that really, really well, because I know it's kind of hard with the phone here um, of what he says there. But there's you, you can see it now on your screen there, the 50-minute meeting behind closed doors. And what concerns me is I'm really watching, as I watch this meeting between President Erdogan and, and, and the Pope of Rome, it kind of reminds me of the days of uh, Nero, the, uh, the emperor of Rome, and of course, their conquest against, uh, of course, Nero dies, as we know, and then uh, uh, he succeeded, and then, uh, uh, then uh, I think it's Vaspian, and then Vaspian appoints his son Titus to be the very man that would actually conquer Jerusalem. After Rome suffers many defeats over trying to take Jerusalem back. Now, this is what's really interesting. It gets kind of odd here. This is what they're meeting about is Jerusalem. Now, if you've ever studied the history on the Roman conquest over Jerusalem, the Jews were actually doing pretty good there for a while. They defeated the Romans. They defeated the Syrian military that came in. I mean, the Romans suffered some major defeats by the Jews. This is, uh, I forget what year it is, around 50, uh, you know, uh, A.D., or, or the common era, if you want to say C.E., which way you prefer, after the death of Yeshua and his resurrection. I'll, I just say after the death. I don't like that. I like it more after his resurrection would be better. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, there was a big move by Rome when, when the rebellion began to try to crush that rebellion. And no doubt many of the Jews probably thought, see, the words of Jesus are just not coming true. Everything he said is not true. We're not, we're not defeated. We won the war. Well, Titus, though, he comes and he siege, uh, makes siege on the city. Now, here's what's interesting. His father, Vaspian, first goes through the Middle East area there, Galilee, uh, uh, Judea, and he begins to conquer. And Nero dies a while before he ever gets up there to Jerusalem. And so he points Titus. Titus does a very interesting thing, though. And, and I'm going to blow this up where you guys can see this, because uh, this article right here is very well brings out a very important thing that happens here. And I hope you guys can see it. Let me, let me make it a little bit bigger. I'll have it in the description because I really want you guys to be able to see this article right here, what it actually states here. Anyway, it says here, his father's accession to the Roman throne left the war against the Jews to Titus. He was not a very experienced general, but his assistance uh, with T Tiberius Julius Alexander, who had been governor over Judea from 46 to 48, and knew how to fight a war. Titus' own quality was that the new emperor, his father, could trust him. His father's strategy to allow the Jews in Jerusalem to destroy themselves had been successful besides the zealots of uh, Eliezer, son of, uh, of Simon, and the private army of John uh, Gashkala, which, by the way, these are Jews that were fighting each other. Now, I want you to think about what's going on in Israel today. They're using the Jews today to, to basically kill each other. You have, the, you have the far right and the far left in Israel, and they all disagree with one another of how the political situation should unfold in Israel. One is for a two-state solution, the other one's against a two-state solution, one's for a one-state solution, and there's just so much infighting with, with themselves. And this is exactly what Rome was doing back then. <clears throat> all right, this is what they were doing back then. 
they're very successful at it. And this is what's happening today. And Israel is being defeated from within. All right? Now, watch what happens, though. Now, of course, now I, I say that, keep in mind, we know that the Messiah is coming. We know that Yeshua is coming. We know the two witnesses are coming. And that's going to make a big change in this uh, landscape of Israel anyway. And they'll recognize their Messiah. Uh, and not, not Rome's Messiah, that is. So what happens, though? A new leader had come to power, Simon bar Giora, the son of the proselyte. He was a supporter by men from Edomia, the southern part of Judea that the Romans had reconquered only recently. And that was through Titus' father. John and Simon had different agendas. The first strove only for a political freedom and the mentor of silver coins with the alleged freedom of Zion. Simon, on the other hand, stood at the head of a messianic movement. His copper coins have the legend redemption of Zion. It's funny because it's what's happening today. The different ideologies going on in Israel today about how the redemption of Israel is going to come about. And yet we have the Zionist movement of the Rothschilds, which is clearly demonic. And then we have the Zionist movement of the Jews that are wanting to see the coming of the Messiah. On April the 14th in, uh, in the year 70, during Passover, Titus laid siege to Jerusalem. To the northeast, watch what he does, to the northeast of the old city on Mount Scopolis, the legions of Palamina uh, Minata the twelfth, a new addition from Syria, and uh, X5 uh, Apollonarius, I can't say these names, guys, I just have to tell you the truth, I don't understand this Greek stuff, shared a large camp. The Macedon Macedonicia, which is actually from Greek, these are people from the Greek area, was camped at a short distance when X Prentences arrived from Syria. It occupied the Mount of Olives in front of the temple. The soldiers of the region of this legion had a special incentive to fight. They had been defeated by the zealots in 66 and won in revenge, and they did. That's why I'm saying the Jews were really doing some pretty good battling there in the beginning. Killed like 600 of their soldiers, all right? And then they retreated. But I want you to notice the different groups involved here. Keep in mind, Titus is leading all of this, but he's not doing the dirty work, right? Same thing when, you know, Erdogan meets the Pope of Rome, the Nero or the, uh, the Emperor of Rome called Pope Francis. He's not doing the dirty work. But they got certain factions fighting right now over in Syria, but don't worry, they're headed down to Jerusalem. All right? Auxiliaries had been sent by two petty kingdoms on the upper Euphrates. Oh, what do you know? That's up in Turkey today, isn't it? Komagene, uh, I can't pronounce that name either, and Emasa, an Arabian sheikh who felt a deep hatred for the Jews had joined the Romans with his warriors. Now, by the way, this name right here, this Komagene, that literally is smack dab in the middle of modern day Turkey, just north of the border of Syria there. And that guy, right, this group, this, this Arabian sheikh, I don't know if he's part of the ones there or if he's the one that's from Emisa, either which way. Nonetheless, the point is that I'm seeing here is just like Turkey does today and Rome is doing today is all these little fighting factions, all these little jihad groups that they were using to go against Israel. And as he said here, all right, they had a deep hatred of the Jews and had joined the Romans with his warriors and from Italy arrived many adventurer veterans from the defeated armies of Galba and Otho, the, uh, the besieged did not stand a chance against this army. And of course, Jerusalem was sacked. Now the prophet Obadiah also notes this as well when he's accusing Titus for the destruction of Rome. He doesn't call him by name. He's calls him by Edom, all right? Esau's descendant is what he is. And he says, but you stood aloof as one of them. And, of course, he talks about Jerusalem, you know, being laid siege to and going into captivity. All right? Clearly, Titus, a Roman general. And Titus, a Roman general, wasn't getting his hands dirty, was he? It was all these other fighters that he had rallied up against him today. And when I saw this, and then I see that the Pope of Rome is meeting with Erdogan, and I'm thinking about all these different factions he you know, Turkey has been backing what? He's been backing the, uh, uh, the, the Al-Nusra Front. He's worked with Al-Qaeda. He's worked with the different, a whole bunch of little rogue factions, just like Rome was doing here. 
And Rome's meeting Erdogan over Jerusalem because he hates the fact that President Trump has said that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. Interesting, isn't it? And they're working together. I guess maybe he's letting him know, finish up what you got to do in Syria because we need to deal with Israel next. All right? So very troubling. You got to watch what's happening right here. The same identical war plan that came against Jerusalem in 70 AD is once again heading up again today, the exact same type of plan. All these different little battle groups. And let me tell you something, friends. You sit there and you watch our Israeli politicians that are backing Al-Qaeda and some of these other groups over there that are going against Bashar al-Assad. Bashar al-Assad is far more liberal. And tomorrow I'm going to go into a message with you. My wife and I have been working on this. I want you to see just how supportive Russia is of Israel. So many people think it's Russia that's going to come against Israel. No, I think you're looking at the two men in the background that are going to come against Israel. Pope don't like the Jews to have Jerusalem. And neither does Erdogan. So you better be watching who's really the one against Israel. You know, in fact, Putin told... I'll give you a little insight. Putin said to President Bashar al-Assad, you will not retaliate against the Jews in Israel. If they strike, you will not retaliate. All right? Now, I don't like everything Putin does, by no means. I don't like the fact that he let the Kurds get pummeled by Erdogan. I really, that upset me there that he did that. But when it comes to the Jewish people, Erdogan, much different than Petro Poroshenko in Kiev, where they don't want a Holocaust museum. They, they, they had to almost vomit to go down there to, to the Holocaust Memorial of Remembrance. They did it because the Americans made them. And yet their soldiers are wearing neo-Nazi SS patches on their shoulders. Do you think that really makes the Jews in Ukraine feel comfortable? Do you remember when the rabbis were saying to the Jews of Ukraine, you better leave there before you get exterminated? All right, so think about what's going on. Think about who's really going to come against Jerusalem in the end of the day. And again, as I said, the, the Israeli government, not everybody in the government, we got some people in the government, though, that have been backing the worst of the worst of the jihads going against Bashar al-Assad. And then all this fake stuff about Bashar al-Assad using chemical weapons. They were trying to say it was sarin gas here recently, but I can't wait to show you the video why they had to change their tune and say, oh, oh I'm sorry, it was chlorine gas. You know why? Because when they're little, and I'm going to show you the video. When the little white helmets got together to make their video there, they were really smart this time. They made sure everybody had gloves on and suits on and, and little mask on and stuff. And they're washing down all these guys that are supposedly, allegedly filled with chlorine gas. But one of the guys, though, forgot to put his gloves on. And he's there with his bare hands right at the end of the video. They published a video before they caught it because it was just a quick clip. And I noticed it. But when they noticed that they made the mistake, then they had to change their story. Oh, we can't use that for propaganda. We've got to tell them it was excellent. I'm sorry, it wasn't sarin gas. It was chlorine gas. And some of our guys got hurt in the process of that. Jeez. And if you watch the video carefully as well, two of the other ones that were supposedly gas that were sitting off to the side that they weren't watching, the camera guy accidentally goes over there and shows you the two other spectators that were supposed to be ones getting decontaminated as well. Oh, jeez, what a joke. And yet we fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. Show only the Americans what they need to see. Guys, you're smarter than that, and I know you are. You need to keep your eye on these two right here. You want to talk about who's going to come against Israel? That's where it's going to be at. Tomorrow we're going to share with you in depth, though. And I don't say Russia could come against Israel as well. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think it'll be as long as President Putin is in power. You get another leader in there, this wacko crazy guy or something like that, yeah, Russia could probably go very much against Israel. But a lot of people forget, the third most spoken language in Israel today, you know what it is? It's not English. Hebrew is the first language, Arabic is the second language, the third most spoken language in Israel is Russian. Because we have two million Jews living in Israel that are all Russian. We have Putin who built a museum of remembrance for the Holocaust victims in Russia. It's called a, it's not only remembrance, but also tolerance, as it's called. We know that President Putin made a law against anti-Semitism against the Jewish people. 
And if you do something that's anti-Semitic, you go to prison in Russia for going against Jewish people. He's been the most tolerant president in modern history for Russia, for the Jewish people. He works with Israel. When he knows Israel is going after a target, Prime Minister Netanyahu has always consulted with Putin, let him know the threats that he feels like we're facing. He turned off his missile system so that he's not targeted. When Bashar al-Assad sent that message that he wanted to retaliate, President Putin said, no, you're not. No, you're not. All right? By the way, I just saw that flicker on the screen here. Let me show you that, what I was going to share with you here. Let's see if I got it still. Oh, no, it's down here. Remember when I was reading here in this article right here, uh, this group here from, where was it? Here it is. Co uh, Komajin, all right? That was one of the fighting groups that came down that had a hatred for the Jews, all right? I actually had it in a picture here. I wanted you to be able to see this, all right? This is where they are, right here on the map here. It's right here in modern-day Turkey. This whole region was, was Turkey, all right? Back then, the Armenian Kingdom, etc. But this is modern-day Turkey, and right there is where one of those fighting factions came from. There, another photo that I had up here, and this was uh, this was the uh, Nabishian Empire, which is interesting as well because you got to keep in mind all these people are against Syria, which is modern-day Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and the Sinai Peninsula of Egypt. All these fighting factions came to try to topple. Uh, where well, they were successful in toppling Jerusalem, as well as the Roman military. So you had all these here. You had up here from Turkey. You had Syrian forces here that came as well. That, that had, and the reason Syrian forces came, because they'd been conquered by the Romans already. So they were kind of under the allegiance of the Romans' forces. And of course, you had the Roman Empire and also the Greeks that came down there. They were all fighting with Titus. The exact same thing we see today in modern-day Syria today all these different nations have come against this one little nation, Syria. And it's important for the Jewish people, it should be, because Syria is a homeland of the mothers of Israel. And I'm going to share with you also, you're going to be very interested to see this. Uh, I'll save it for later. God bless you. Shalom.